If people think that the importance of a university education is to transmit information from one person to another person, they have missed the whole boat. Because we have this thing called the internet. All the information is out there. The university is special because we have an environment where you interact with people from other cultures, philosophies, or other ideas that make you think in different ways. Let's go. That's the only way forward to better understand each other, better understand the world's problems, and come up with solutions to virtually everything. Welcome to class. How's everybody doing today? Let's hear it. Come on, bring it up. Yep, yep, yep. What's happening? What's new in the world? What's in the news? Yes, sir, all the way in the back row. John Boyer's class is a massive show. You want to be there. It's like being at a live Stephen Colbert show. Like, nobody would give up that ticket. It's almost like I just watched an hour-long Netflix special. But at the same time, I really liked what I was learning. It's not just about geography. It's the culture, the history, the business. The politics, the people, the landscape, and how that all intercollides with how different groups of people interact with each other. Anybody who steps foot on the Virginia Tech campus in some way or another hears about this faculty member. And students, you know, line up to register for his courses. At Virginia Tech, I teach world regions, which is a general overview of the entire planet in one semester. Way back in the day, I was teaching a live, small class. It was only 50 people. Over the years, the class demand grew, and so we bumped up to 550 people for a very long time. And then we bumped up to 2,500 people for a time in still a live class forum. That's when we came up with the idea of, well, should we just go online? And when we converted to online classes, that's when we said, we definitely have to have about three hours of lecture in a can every week for people to watch. Oh, hey there. Katie and I have been professional partners for well over a decade. And at this point, we're also life partners for the last few years. She does all the filming and setting up the studio and all the editing on the filming, all things that I know nothing about. You want multiple maps? I would say use the same couple of maps, for one for each region, and then maybe sporadically pop them back in about every 10 or 15 minutes. We're able to bounce ideas off each other and go back and forth. We're just a really great team. He brings the content and then I think of ways to get, bring it to the students and how they can access it best. Worst lectures ever are people standing and not moving and reading their own PowerPoint slides. Woo! That is as painful as life gets. We've all been there. So then when I started recording, I understood implicitly I have to bring that energy to this space. Otherwise, it's just going to be another talking head, and that's not going to work. I look in the camera because I want to talk to you. If I can connect with your eyes or connecting with my eyes, then I am telling you a story. And it does feel like a connection. All righty, I'm going to start yelling now. Is that cool? Hello again, friends. Time for the first official podcast slash flash quiz. When you say John Boyer, the second thing that you have to say is the plaid Avenger. I think everything about him is just a little bit plaid. Is a, a plaid jacket or a plaid shirt, plaid tie. His car is plaid. He has a plaid canoe. That's the plaid Avenger. I'm avenging international ignorance and injustice. We've always been willing to experiment. 
and I love Superman and Batman and Spider-Man and they're interesting storylines, but I just thought it's kind of a waste. Why can't we use this medium to teach something about what's happening in the real world? So that's when we decided to write a textbook using graphic arts. And that's when I came up with the Plat Avenger character, loosely based on the way that I dress, simply as a storytelling device. The books that everybody loves are ones that you just keep turning the page. It's like they're long and there's a lot of stuff in there, but it's a well-written story. And so it keeps you engaged and makes you want to keep going. And that was our mission with the book. Yes, it has this fake superhero. Yes, it's a little campy. But really, the most innovative part is that it's written in the first person. The town I grew up in is Vinton, Virginia. Small town, only had one high school, everybody knew each other type of place. So it was a certain point that I wanted to escape and the military is a really good way to get away from it all and get paid doing it. Within six months, I found myself in Coast Guard boot camp. And after graduating, I ended up on a icebreaker, one of two ice-breaking vessels. They have both since been decommissioned, and that ties into current events because there's not as much ice as there used to be in the world. So when people are talking about global warming and the dissolution of the ice pack, I have personal first-hand experience. It's kind of insulting that you would have these climate change deniers when there are real humans who say, no, it's definitely different. Now, every generation thinks that the world is probably getting ready to end. <laughs> we all think at some point, wow, things are really not looking good. <laughs> this is true throughout all human history. But it really looks more intense right now. We're on the edge of a knife as a species, and hopefully we're gonna fall off on the right side of it. The course definitely changed my perspective. You start to understand that you have a duty to other people. Your decisions, your actions can have a positive impact on the rest of the world. Um, and this course really opens that up to you. I think the most crucial and important thing you can do is to hook students early, is to say, hey, I'm not gonna teach you everything in the first semester you're here about Japan or Russia or South Africa, but I'm gonna get you passionate and curious and engaged so that you want to learn more about all these topics for the rest of the three to four years that you're here. And one of the ways you do that is empathy. Empathy is that you have an ability to understand multiple sides of an argument, truly understand both sides of an argument. I feel like I'm helping prep the next generations of world leaders, of policy makers, of decision makers, of voters. So I'm pretty passionate about them having a base knowledge of the world and understanding that it's all kind of connected. And your decisions at any given juncture in any given country do affect the entire system at some level. And I think the future of education is making those connections. <laughs>